We're going to do some tasting notes. So what we're going to do is take a look at each beer. We're going to compare it to what it should theoretically be by the judging guy to okay. see how close we are and true to that specific type of beer. Take some notes and then see what we can do possibly to improve on the next beer. But we're going to talk about the first thing. We're going to look at the smell of the beer, looking for the hop and malt aromas. Second, we're going to take a look at the beer to determine its color and clarity. Third, we're going to determine the flavors and mouthfeel. Last, just the overall impression based on the characteristics we just talked about, aroma, color, flavor, and mouthfeel. So um, today we're going to first we're going to start out with our um, Direwolf Dunkel. It's a Munich Dunkel Lager. It's actually our first lager that we made. and This is our first try to lager, so um, we're going to try tasting this, see what we like and don't like. We recently just made a second revision of this one, um, so we'll see how we like this one, and then we can compare it when the other one's done. I gotta stop us real quick. Are we live? We're live. One hundred percent live. This this label that we have on this one is just absolutely beautiful. It's I nice, love what yeah. Zach did to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna get a quick close up of the of the label itself and let's see if we can see it. Ooh, it's a wolf, dark wolf, dunkel, baby. Yep, absolutely. You'd be surprised. So, well, uh, we're getting ready to crack this one. I'll kind of go over what we're looking for, what we were looking for the style to be. So the appearance, when we go ahead and pour it, we're looking for a deep copper to brown, often medium red or kind of a granite tint. Um, it's going to be creamy, light to medium tan head, usually pretty clear, although some murky unfiltered versions do exist. Well, yeah, being a wheat beer, that some of these can be a little more cloudy than others. Yeah, I think with our, we're kind of getting our fermentation process down to make sure that we get the best clarity that we can mm -hmm. on it right now. Okay. Ready to crack it? Yeah, let's crack her. So you want to do the honors? Sure. Sounds Drop good. anchor on this one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Drop table. Hey. <laughs> Drop top. Okay. Awesome. You need to go over. Get that first pour. It's beautiful. Thank you. So appearance dark, uh, deep copper, dark brown. I think we're, we're we're pretty close. That's got some good head on it. Yeah, it is nice and carbonated. <laughs> it's all about that head. First video. We've done this before. This is like Cheers. perfectly even pours. All right, very good. So smell Ooh. first. Flip. It's got a good carbonation to it. It seems like a right because this is our oldest beer, so this is about a year old now. So um, seems to be holding up pretty well. I can see it's still bubbling up pretty decently. Mm -hmm. It's not too. It's not overly carbonated, but has a good mouthfeel to it. I like it. How long have we uh, had this one for? How long has this one been sitting for? Yeah, about a year. A year? Okay. You can tell a little bit of reduced carbonation from it, but still it does have that mouthfeel. It's a little bubbly. I can taste the... Uh... Pretty clean tasting. This is a 5.2% uh, uh, alcohol content in this with about 22 IBU. So I think we changed the um, hops a little bit in the next one. I think it has a little bit more hops. So we'll see how we like that. But um, you do taste the uh, kind of yeastiness of it. And the um, the uh <laughs> So with, with it, the aroma we're supposed to get is a rich, elegant, deep, malty sweetness. Typically like Ooh, bread sweetness. crust. Small hints of chocolate, nuts, and caramel. And or That's, coffee. Yeah, there's a um, bread crust. Yeah, burnt crust, the, the Italian way, you know? There is a darker kind of, like, roast, roasty kind of flavor to it. Like an amber kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know how... That nightness so is harmless. Right. It's not super clear. It's pretty clear, but it's not... I mean, being that it's a um, German wheat beer, I guess you expect some of that. It shouldn't be uh, completely clear. Maybe definitely weird, on the darker amber side for sure. It's definitely yeah, not a yeah. light amber. I do see yeah. a right. red, red, red hue. Yeah. yeah. So flavor, we're looking for a soft, rich, and complex flavor. Mm -hmm. 
usually over tones of toasted bread crust, again, Chris, ah. with or without burnt, harsh, grainy toneness, mild caramel, toasty, and nuttiness. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll say something. I'll, I'll pull page out of uh, Josh's book here. You know, we've never said that we've had an over-carbonated beer. So that, that's why this one is held up, because Josh kept telling us about the carbonation. <laughs> You, you gotta so as a result, we have these. you got to test the boundaries. I think that's really something yeah. that we've been learning as we've been brewing, yeah. is we've had probably about 12 brews, would you say, about now, Jay? Yeah, maybe a little more than that, but... Yeah. We've been trying new things and yeah. taking a recipe I, and always trying to improve on it. Changing slightly, yeah. Like, just yeah. evolving from doing kits to all grain, you know? Yeah. It's like a lot of steps, and we're making them, so... It's, it's a right. learning curve, and I think we're, we're starting to get there where we're getting more disciplined on taking notes, yeah. Trying to be very precise with what type of grain we're using, how much we're using, slowly yeah. making changes to the recipe and finding the pieces that we do like and maybe changing some of the things that we don't. Right. And adjusting our carbonation, to your yeah. point, has been one of the great successes that we well, did, like Chris. Tweaking flavor profiles and stuff like that, you know? Like, oh, we want a little more coffee in this or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, a little more malt in it. Right. Yeah. So. I think we're lucky too to have a good local brew store where we're able to yeah. go ahead and get our ingredients. It's close, they're knowledgeable, yeah. they have all of our supplies and they're able to give us some tips and tricks that we may not right. usually try or do by changing like either hops or a grain profile. Right. They didn't pay us to say any of that. No. Well, we didn't. Can't, can't can't pork pork. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're wondering, all our grains are not gluten free, so if, if you are... Uh, you know, worried about that? Yeah, just, a lot. just sign off. <laughs> We're not changing. So you've already got your first one down, eh? Pretty good, yeah, I like it. It's pretty easy to drink. It it's is, at yeah. five percent. Yeah. yeah, it takes a little bit longer to make because it is a lager, but um it does have a nice clean taste to it. It's not too harsh in any ways. Mm -hmm. I do taste that kind of like you're saying, that amber roastiness to it. Yeah. And that yeastiness to it, which I do like. So for me it's 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 a solid beer. It's um easier to drink beer, especially when it's a little bit colder out, it has that nice lightness of like a, a wheat beer, but at the same time it has a little more body to it, a little more depth to it. Did we brew this at the same time of year last year? I know it's yeah, about we did. a year ago. A few weeks, a, a okay. few weeks earlier. Okay. Yeah. So that's a little over, just over a year now. So, so at the end of February then? We just yeah. brewed this, was that two weeks ago? Or yeah. One, two weeks ago? Was this the yeah. second rendition or the third one? On this? this is the second. What the third dunkle we've ever done? Yeah, correct. Yeah, we had the first that. one. That, that, brass that. nut dunkle. That was what really kicked us all that's, off. That's, the mysterious brass nut dunkle. Great disappearance. We ever find? We yeah, know, uh, there was no I don't know. There was, there was, there was, there was <laughs> a mystery. It was nutless. You know? <laughs> so to give you a little backstory, we had a uh, dunkle that we were making our first ever. We were just switching over to going all grain, and we got the uh, setup where you get the big igloo coolers. Uh, we're doing a uh, tiered system. Shout and out to Igloo. <laughs> our other sponsor, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so at the uh, at the bottom of our, uh, our what is it called, grain? Yeah, our um, grain bag. Mash tun. Mash tun. At the bottom of our mash tun was a uh, metal filter with a brass nut at the bottom of it to keep the grain from uh, going, going out. You see where it's going? And um, we thought we lost the uh, the washer. We thought the washer wasn't attached. We thought it got loose, causing uh, our grain bed to not settle correctly. And I'm pretty sure we have a photo of <laughs> sitting through the grain, so we'll uh, insert that. Yeah, so. That's yeah. in the time of Vine. Yeah, yeah. I remember it that. was. Yeah. But we ended up just trying to go through and dig through our, our actual grain to see if we lost the, the mysterious brass nut yeah. that... Um, Never came to be because it was actually properly attached. <laughs> so it was a who would have thought? <laughs> mini heart attack we had, and uh, everything turned out for the best. And we almost had a boil over, you know, with uh, your dad. Uh, you know, he's, he was telling us, you know, it's somewhere in there. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like reach in. Just gotta reach deeper. Get past that green bread. <laughs> yeah. The grain was about 120 degrees of <laughs> yeah, scorching. Though. There you go, a little burn. So we almost had a boil over there. Yeah. No. So yeah, we took that, that previous recipe and modified it because we kind of wanted to um, start doing some lagers, kind of get into some of those different kinds of beers. We thought that was a good candidate um, to make in early in the year, satisfying during the colder months. So that's how we kind of came up with the, um, the Dunkel Lager. 